think we need to try and wrap it up. The children, they're all excited back there. They got some fun games. How many feel so good that this house is full of children of God? That includes you as well, okay? Just keep that in mind. It's the best thing that I have learned. I want to talk to you this morning about leading families through kingdom mindset. Leading families through kingdom mindset. I want to allow you to challenge yourself to recognize that you are not just a number on earth. You are not just a person on earth. You are not just, I come from this family, I come from this country, and I live in this country. That's not who you are. The day you accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior, you become part of the kingdom of God. It's a different perspective. When you become part of the kingdom of God, you don't say, I belong to this family, I belong to this church, I belong to this country. You're right under the living headquarters of the kingdom of God. And where is the living headquarters of the kingdom of God? It's you. Right you. How many believe you have the Holy Spirit? If you have the Holy Spirit, you are the living headquarters of the kingdom of God. The Holy Spirit lives inside of you, not for you just to come on church on a Sunday or to feel goosebumps or feel good. He has power and authority within you that he has completely endowed you with. And he wants you to move in that anointing. If you are here and you're saying, I'm still struggling for a job. I'm still struggling for a spouse. I'm still struggling for this. I'm still struggling for that. I hope this morning you can just shift your thinking and begin to say, Holy Spirit, I want to move in that kingdom authority. How many would want to see that happen in your life? That's where we are going, friends. That's where we're going, you know. Let's move to the next slide. Let's look at the scriptures where Jesus is talking about. It says, honor the anointing over your life. I'm talking about the life of Jesus. So he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. The word brought up, where he grew up, where he was raised up. And as his custom was, what does that really mean? That means he went to church every Sunday or every Friday, whatever. As his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up to read. And as he was handed the book of the prophet Isaiah, when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written. It's a huge difference. You and I have the Bible. But when the Holy Spirit begins to move in your life, he gives you words. How many of you receive words from the Bible? You have been given that scripture. When you begin to, you have been given the scripture, you begin to recognize that the anointing of the Holy Spirit is upon you. It's not a nice little feeling, friends. It is kingdom of heaven. You know what a kingdom of heaven is? A kingdom of heaven where there's no sickness. A kingdom of heaven where there is no financial problem. A kingdom of heaven where there's no lack. A kingdom of heaven where there's only blessing. That kingdom of heaven anointing is upon you. We Christians must become aware of that every day of our life. That I am the anointed one. So when Jesus walked into the temple... For 30 some years, he was a carpenter. But that day when he was released by the Father to start his ministry, he walked in and he found the scripture and he began to say, I am the anointed one. I am the one God has chosen me. I am the one God has sent me. He began to take his position of authority. Friends, you and I get to do the same. How about you all stand? i got to wake you up a little bit. Put your hand on your head. And let's say this right after me, okay? Luke 4, 18 is a scripture that I want to give you is a promise of the Lord that has been spoken, not just on Jesus, but upon all of us. Luke 4.18 says, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the good news of the poor. He sent me to uh, announce, release the captive. You say that over yourself. I am the anointed one. 
I am the chosen one. I am the living headquarters of the Holy Spirit. I live by faith and not by sight. I am calling things into my life as I, 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 even though I have not seen it. Even though I have not seen it. You see, when you begin to speak over your own life, you are honoring the anointing upon your life. The problem with us as Christians, you may be seated. The problem with us as Christians is that we're always looking to someone to release the anointing upon me. Are, are you hearing me? We're always looking to someone. We did a school with 50 people. Our number one thing we were teaching them was that don't look to me for prayer. You are the anointed one. You are the power that the Lord has given you. You begin to allow them and you begin to exercise the authority that the Holy Spirit has given you. And Jesus began to do that that day. And they were like, who is he? Is he not the carpenter, the Joseph's son? That's what they looked up to him for, who they knew him for 30 years. That's what will people look up to you and say, wow, wait a minute. Juliana, out of all the year, purple, she is loud. Growing in the anointing, she's laying hands on the sick, she's praying over her family, her children, her grandchildren are coming. How does that happen? It's because when you begin to honor the anointing upon your life, things begin to shift in your life. Amen? This local church believes in empowering people to live in their anointing. Yes, we will pray for you. Yes, we care for you. But nothing like living in your own authority that the Lord has given you. Let's move to the next slide. That's what we did, okay? Let's look at this. Honor the promises of God over your life. Honor the promises of God over your life. How many believe you have a promises of God from you? Honor the promises of God over your life. How do you know that? The scripture that stands out to you the most in the Bible is the promise God has given you. The, the, meditate upon those scriptures. Live by those scriptures. Call the scriptures into life. And you begin to release that into your life. Look at this verse right here. In Luke 4.21, he began speaking to them, today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing and in your presence. According to Jesus, this scripture was already given to them many, many, many years ago. But he said, today it has been fulfilled in your presence because he called it out. He said, I'm anointed. I'm chosen. I've been called apart. I'm set apart. And today in your presence, this scripture has been fulfilled. Friends, you have a promise from God, don't you? How many have promised from God? You call that into action. You call that into life. You call that into reality. Don't take it for granted saying that, oh God, if you can. Only orphans do that. But a child of God, when a son of God says, God, I believe in this. You remember the prayer that Jesus taught to the disciples? How did it go? He said, our father. That means your father and my father. Who is in heaven? And what was it? Please give me this day. No, 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 no. Give me this day my daily bread. It was an imperative prayer. It was like a forceful prayer because I am a son of God. I am a child of God. I have authority that God has given me. I can speak the prayer that God has given me and I can exercise it in my life. Amen to that? Because I think, friends, we are going to see something, the things we have never seen in our life. Don't get scared about, yes, there's going to be wars and rumors of wars. Yes, there's going to be all those bank shaking and all that stuff. But you have the living headquarters within you and you live by that. Amen? All right, let's go to the next slide. Enemy knows you have the anointing for your family. Maybe you've never heard that. The enemy knows you have the anointing for your family. Let that sink in a, in a little bit. Because I want you to see this. When things go wrong in our home, of course, we immediately give credit. Oh, that Satan came and did that to me. That devil came and did that to me. We kind of begin to give honor to the devil 
than recognizing the authority that's upon you. We allow our mind to be shifted. Please keep me in prayer. The enemy is attacking me too much. Well, John Arnold would say to us, where your faith is, so it will be unto you. Where you put your faith into, that is where you will be. If you have put your faith into the enemy, you have just given yourself into the enemy's hand. But if you put your faith in the Lord and faith in yourself, the enemy is nobody. Yes, he does know that you are an anointed one. Like the scripture. And the demons also came out of many, crying out and saying, you are the Christ. The word Christ, which is the word Christos in Greek, is the word little anointed one. Jesus called himself that I am the anointed one. What stops you from thinking that you're not the anointed one? You have the Holy Spirit? Then I am anointed of God. You have the revelation from God? Then I am anointed from God. You have dreams from God? Then I am anointed from God. Take your position. You take your position and the demons do know that you are anointed. But that doesn't mean I am fearful and shaken by what he wants to do with me. We taught this week in Bangalore, and they may have never heard this message. We talked on stronghold and walking in the light. And we began to talk to them about deliverance. And they were like, deliverance means you cast the devil out, you scream the devil out of them. And kind of, we taught a separate teaching on how to remove the foothold or the stronghold from a person's life. That means the enemy has no place to stand in your life. And they were like, we've never heard that teaching. You remove that foothold or that stronghold out of your life. Simple thing I'm going to give you, unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is the greatest stronghold the enemy has. If you have unforgiveness towards somebody, even yourself, your spouse, or anybody, you have given full access to the enemy to come into your life and begin to bring problems into your life. You just have to say, Lord, I forgive that person. I release this person out of my heart. I forget. We walked through that forgiveness prayer all through the week. We saw amazing healings begin to happen in people's life. Why? Because the enemy has no foothold in, his, in, in someone's life. And so they know you're anointed. They know that you are the chosen one. They know you have the thing. But you begin to act on it, not begin to be allowing the enemy to put scare in you. Amen to that? Next, go to the next slide, please. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 6. Recognize your authority. You know, we can study on the book of Ephesians for a long time if you really want to meditate upon. Look what Paul said right here. And he raised us up together with him, which is Jesus, when we believed and seated us with him in the heavenly places because we are in Christ Jesus. Let's pause there for a second. What is the meaning of the word heavenly places? What do you guys think it is? If you study the Greek word, it is the three heavens it talks about. The first heaven, the second heaven, and the third heaven. It talks about even in the kingdom of darkness. If you read the book of Colossians, he talks about the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of light. You and I have such authority that even the kingdom of darkness cannot prevail against us. If you begin to recognize the authority that you live in in Christ Jesus, even the kingdom of darkness flees from you. The word you are seated in heavenly places. If you read Ephesians chapter 1 again, you study that Jesus, when he raised from the dead, he seated at the right hand of the Father. Right? You know that, right? Right hand of the Father. Guess what? In the spiritual realm... You and I are seated in the same place. In the same place. It's not a nice little word, nice little scripture. It is what you think about yourself is what you will be. If you think depressed, if you think I don't have this, if you think I don't have this, that's what will cause your emotion in your mind. But if you begin to operate in, I am the anointed one. I am the chosen one. I am the living stone of God, according to First Peter. If the moment you begin to live by those words and those scriptures, your position in your mind begins to shift. You begin to call things into your life as if they are. 
Because that's what God is asking of us, my friends. We are not just Christians to fill the church on a Sunday morning. We are Christians to live by faith, even our everyday work, even our everyday home, even over our children. You know, when sickness comes into our home, you begin to take a position of authority. I'm seated in the heavenly places in Christ. I rebuke you, spirit of sickness. Get out of my house right now in Jesus' name. When you begin to speak in that authority, everything shifts in your life. Amen? Let's move to the next one. This is my last slide. This is something I'm going to ask you to do this more often over your life. You need to learn to take your place. What does that mean that it look like? And I think I've shared in this church many, many years ago, but I'll bring it up again. If you have a police officer, which you see in India, a police officer in the middle of the street, trying to navigate the cars, I had a fun time crossing the road with the police officer in between and cars merging in between, and it was one of the funnest things that I had. But then that really hit me. And my sister, who goes before me, and she's like trying to stop the car because she wanted to cross the road. And nobody's stopping. Why would they stop? But if a police officer stands there with a police uniform and he has a little whistle in his mouth and he says, stop, they have to stop. What are they looking at? Authority in the uniform that they have, he has. The authority in the uniform he has. If you and I begin to recognize the authority that's upon me, that the cloth of his anointing that's upon me, you can stop the things that comes against you. You can speak to the things that's against you. You begin to put that cloak of anointing upon you and begin to say, God, I am not going to take this sitting down. I am going to take my position, I'm going to take my authority, and I'm going to walk in it. So let's all stand on that note. Before I talk about uh, praying for one, uh, praying for one yourself, I want to remind you from the month of November, we're starting a home group. Uh, we're doing, what should you remind me? Men's group, women's group, and legacy group. So if you don't get our email, uh, please see Ashwin. Uh, he, can, he can give you uh, uh, access to all our newsletters and whatnot. And uh, we encourage you to. We also have a, uh, what do you call a WhatsApp uh, group or something? Yeah, we, if you want access to that, we'll let you have. Because we're going to start meeting on Tuesdays. And we're going to really, really teach a lot more about that. But today, I want to help you see that this is my highest passion, is to equip people to walk in their authority. Yes, I'm very open to praying for people. I'm not against it. But it's like you recognizing the authority God has given you. You recognizing the authority that the Lord wants you to walk in it. And so I encourage you, pray for yourself. Pray for yourself. How do you pray for yourself? And say, Holy Spirit, stir up my faith. Holy Spirit, stir up my heart. Holy Spirit, stir up the anointing within me. Holy Spirit, stir me up for the things that I'm supposed to be doing, the things that I'm called to do. And the more you begin to act on it, I promise you things will begin to shift in your life. So how about you put your hand on your belly right now? Holy Spirit, come right now. Holy Spirit, I ask you to come right now. Marina, would you mind coming and just playing little keys? Thank you, Holy Spirit. Come right now. I know you're already here. But would you release faith in this room right now in the name of Jesus? Faith in them to know that they are anointed. Faith in them to know that they are called of God. Faith in them to know that they are living stone. They are a living stone. 
I just begin to stir up your faith right now. Come, Holy Spirit, begin to stir up their faith right now. More, Lord. More, Lord. Move upon them right now. I speak to that fear right now in this room. I command those fear to be gone of you in the mighty name of Jesus. I speak to the spirit of fear, the spirit of doubt. I bind you. Get off their homes. Get off their lives now in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. With anointing comes boldness. With anointing come boldness. Acknowledge the anointing upon your life right now. First Peter chapter 2, verse 5 says, You are a living stone. You are being built together as a spiritual house for a holy and a dedicated priesthood to offer sacrifices acceptable and pleasing to God through Christ Jesus. You are that living stone. I bless your mind to know that you are a living stone. If I can come to each one of you and I can shake you up for a second, I can say, you are a living stone. It's not a nice little verse. It is the truth kingdom of God come right now. Will of God be done upon each and every one of us. Put your hand on your head right now and say, I am anointed. I am anointed. I have the spiritual authority over my life, over my family, over my children, over my grandchildren. I have authority because I belong to Christ and Christ belongs to God. I will not be shaken. I'm going to become bold and courageous because I am the chosen vessel of God. I am the living stone of God. Oh, Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you for Jesus over my life. Thank you that Jesus did a divine exchange for me. He took my shame took my guilt, took my fear, took my ungodly thinking off me. And he has given me a Holy Spirit which brings peace, joy, love. I bless each and every one of them, Lord, today. And I pray, Father, in the name of Jesus, would you give them revelation upon revelation in the coming days? Would you give them dreams like never before? Would you give them an understanding that you are in us. I bless them, Lord. I bless them. Lord, I pray for our church family, not all those who are watching us online. I pray, Lord, that they will have a revelation in the coming days. I pray, Lord, they will, you will quicken their spirit in these coming days, that, that they will recognize that they are a chosen vessel. Chosen vessel. In Jesus' mighty name. Jesus' mighty name. Jesus, mighty name. Come on, say to yourself, I'm unshakable. I'm immovable. I walk in the authority. I live by faith and not by sight. I am a child of God. I am born of the Spirit. In Jesus, mighty name. Jesus, mighty name. Amen, amen, amen. Wow, that was a beautiful Sunday morning. It was a bit of a surprise for Marina and I. But uh, thank you so, so much for doing this for us. Um, as promised, we're going to have some fellowship. Uh, so we got some food. Uh, please stay back. And if you're visiting us for the first time, please stay back and fellowship. And we'd love to connect with you. God love you all. See you next Sunday. Bye-bye.